Good evening and welcome to Plain Talk. Following a question from Member of Parliament, Cathy Hughes, Guyana learned that 15 out of 21 radio licenses had been granted to mainly government and pro-government entities. On Plain Talk this evening, we discuss what has become a very significant and sore issue in the country, and it touches on our constitution, the right of people, to disseminate news, the right of people to receive news, the right of people not to be discriminated against. Joining me on Play Talk this evening is my guest, uh, Mr. Glenn Lal, managing owner and publisher of the Kaicho News, and Mr. Enrico Wilford, himself a broadcaster and quite an expert on the issue of broadcast legislation. Gentlemen, welcome to Plato. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. Now, for decades, we complained that we had only one radio station. Um, we now have several. President Ramatar has said that Jack Deal was merely fixing that problem and keeping a promise. What's your reaction to that statement? My first reaction is, I don't want to use a politician's phrase of a sleight of hand, but it, it is a magician's phrase too. It is a sleight of hand to say on the one hand that uh, President Jagdew is fixing the problem, but on the other hand, he, he, he does not commit to a promise to a contractual arrangement that he had with the then president Desmond Hoy, that uh, the leader of the PNC, Robert Corbyn, took over, in that there will be no new broadcasting stations until there is a broadcasting act. For him, on the other hand, as I said, to break uh, that commitment, that covenant, by saying that I was fixing a problem, is to be deceitful to be dishonest and now not this, is, this to, is president ramatar we talk about i'm talking statement. about president jadio here president ramatar's statement is is in itself trying to confuse the issue if you want me to speak to president ramatar no, no, because i was asking you about that statement but the statement, statement the statement i'm saying the statement has its genesis in these two things, Chris. First, the, there was a monopoly, agreed. But you don't break a monopoly by calling in your five friends and saying, here, you take 15 and then call six other people and say you take one. And persons who were there in line, you get zero. That's not how you do uh, business. It's not fair. It's, it, it's not transparent. And he certainly was not accountable to the people, even those people with whom he had a contractual arrangement, that he will not do this until such time as there's a proper broadcasting I, I notice you repeat the word contractual. You, you meant there was, there was an agreement, a written agreement. Uh, there was an agreement. Yeah, there was contract. an agreement. I, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not versed in law. I don't know whether it's a, it, it's a contractual yeah. a, arrangement okay. under the law. But to me, and to, I, I think, a large percentage of the public out there, if I say that I'm not going to do something under these conditions, I have in fact engaged in a social contract with okay. the, okay. the individuals. Okay, thanks. Ben? Mr. Ram, I think this nation really do not understand the severity of the airwaves of this nation. I don't think the people of this country really, really get the message, understand how important the airwaves in is of any nation. And I honestly believe that the, this act just wake up one morning just before he demit office and grant 15 radio license to himself, his friend and his party is the most wicked and nasty act President Jack Deo has committed since he has sit in office as president. 
I was just chatting with two MP yesterday and I was telling them about this issue. I don't think the budget is as important as this radio and cable license of this nation. They're different issues though, both of which have to be addressed. They're basically the same. Cable license allows you to have radio channels, TV channels, and wireless internet. And it is very important, Chris. It is important that we, we take control of this issue. In, in, this, in the sense that Mr. Lal makes the point, the significance of the airwaves, how do regulators, and you're very familiar, um, Mr. Wolford, with regulations, how do regulators view the, the national airwaves? airwaves? The regulators have always viewed the National Way Airwaves going back to the 1920s as a national resource, as a public space, as a public resource that needed to be parceled off, partitioned, and given out in such a way that it appears to be fair and transparent. Why? Because once you are dealing with frequencies, you are likely to have interference, you are likely to overlap, you are likely to um, have cross-border problems and what have you. So regulators have always said, look, what you have to do is to parcel out these frequencies in such a way that the community, the local community benefits, the regional uh, or grouping uh, larger proportion of the population would benefit, and then the national people will benefit. And in some cases, with, 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 with um, organizations like the BBC, the Voice of America, Deutsche Welle, um, uh, what CCTV out of China and so on, that persons internationally can benefit, CNN and what have you. So the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union, the oldest union on the face of this earth, has decided in any area in any area the wow. oldest union international telecommunications union has decided well look that what we are going to do well it, with the, the international post and telegraph the, the international postal service and so on all of that came on the, that grouping but when i'm talking about the itu decided look we are going to have an international frequency regulation board and we are going to regulate frequencies across the world. In the same way, telephone service is regulated across the world. When you dial one, you know you're dialing the Americas. When you're dialing five, 592, 589, 594, you know you're dialing South America. When you're dialing four, just in case people never realize that you're dialing Europe, four, four is England, yes. as you would know. So there is a regulation in place to cover this what we have done in this country is in in effect ignore the regulation if you go back to 2001 the national frequency management unit has not submitted and i guess they're going to come back to me and say wolford you're talking nonsense we submitted this since uh, 2001 but the public does not know it, and it's, it, 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 is on, it is on the ITU website who has submitted what frequencies. So we have not submitted, according to the ITU website, since 2001, what our frequencies are. So these frequencies are, as Glenn said, very, very important to the society, and here's why. Because when you look across, we're, we're, they're, they're all saying, well, look, uh, Bobby Ramroop only got one, tel one radio station and he's using five frequencies. Here is how this will work. If Bobby Ramroop, and I have nothing against Bobby Ramroop, his line of call was used to help Richard Allen. So <laughs> the, um, the frequencies can be used in Matthews Ridge. He can use one frequency in Matthews Ridge. He can come down to Anna Regina, use another one. Come down to Perica, use another one. Come down to Georgetown, use another one. How many do there? Four? Four. And then he could throw one in Barbies. Okay? He can now repeat the, the system 30 miles down inland, coming down from Oriala with one frequency and go all the way 
to, to Madiel. And then he could go down the line, go south again, come, come, come down from K2 and go across to Evokrama and then go down the line to Lefem and uh, Karasabai and um, and uh, So that five, that five in fact that five, you, to cover the you see what I'm saying? That five when you done it, when you're done with the five is like Eli McCollin on it and it's feral all over the place um, but you said the Lima Colin Feral are good. Yes, it, yes. It, but but you, what you, he's using it for will, will be a good. But how he got it was bad. Now, the fact that we say um, that 15 out of 21 have in fact been allocated either to the state or to the government or pro PPP entities. Is there a political dimension to this? And what is that political dimension? That's a beautiful question. <laughs> Let's hear the answer. This is <laughs> <laughs> what, what Jack Dale did <laughs> is basically take over the country with the radio and cable license. Give himself and, 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 and Ramu five. Robert Prasad and his family five. No, no, let's get the party story. five. Give him the Bobby Ramroop and his entity, not Jagdo, no licenses in Jagdo's name. Well, Chris, for me, Ramroop is just a front. I know that Jagdo owns everything. And I'm telling you this because he told me he, he owns the newspaper company when it first started. I'm telling you this on national television. That's the truth about it. Um, so the back what to the political this, this, this 15 yes. channels that they really took and they give one to black people one two channels is just a sham what what they give the, the, the few black people is village radio and they took countrywide radio that's what they did in short they, they want to take full control of the views and opinions of the nation. That's they don't want any independent voices inside. Do you agree with that? And is that the political dimension and significance of all of this, Enrico? Well, I don't agree with the black people part. I agree with the non-Indian part. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alfred Alfonso, I don't think Alfred Alfonso would, 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 would put himself into the, into the black. But, but Glenn is right in terms of when you look at it from an ethnic perspective. It looks as if um, the Indian community or those representing the Indian community got 15 and those representing the non-Indian community got one, 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 one across the way. And that one, one, as Glenn was pointing out, and, and as I uh, alluded to earlier, on that one could only be used one or two times across the coast, one or two times across the uh, sand and hilly belt, uh, one or two times across the savannas, and one or two times really down south. So even if you say, well, you can also repli rep replicate that one, HJTV 94.1, Boom FM, or whatever it's called, they could use the same frequency, let's say, in Linden. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then they could go and use the same frequency in Lethem. But that is still 3 to 50 multiplied by 5. Because if they divide it into into five areas across the country, so what I'm saying, I, I don't know if the word is exponentially. It will mm -hmm. their frequencies mm -hmm. will expand, mm -hmm. and the one one belonging to to use Glenn's ethnic term, the uh, non-Indians or the black people, will only end up with a, a smaller number. So essentially, you know, ratios better than I do in terms of ratios. It will still be outnumbered. So politically, in terms of power in terms of not only frequency and uh, kilowatt power coming out of those uh, TV or radio stations, the power to blanket the country with information. Or disinformation. Will, or disinformation will be in the hands of the ones that got the most. Now, I remember Gail Teixeira. Gail sat on the Joint Commission for Broadcasting, Radio Monopoly, and State Boards with me. Nice lady. She's a smoke, but she's still a nice lady. Now, Gail 
was concerned. Debbie Baker wouldn't agree with you. That's all right. <laughs> no, uh, De Debbie is saying Gail is, uh, uh, is at sea in some places in the river one part in uh, it's okay, but, but that's Debbie's position. Debbie is a nice lady too. Know her since a small. No, here, Gail was saying, the Madam Tashir was saying, that we have to be careful about Rwanda and, you know, and um, people using it for hate crimes and, and what have you. No, what bothers me is, as Glenn just said, what happens if these people who have 15, mm -hmm. I'm not saying Indians, what happens if they, they decide, Indians, yeah. <laughs> if they decide one day to use it in the way Rwanda did it? Maybe they, they don't have that in their genes. Perhaps oh. that's what Mr. Sharon might be suggesting. Okay, okay, I, I understand. Okay. You believe me? <laughs> I'm sure you, know, you understand. You know, you know, Chris, and to defend this thing, you know, the defense they keep coming up with, fulfilling a promise. And that, that's, that's using, from President Ramadan himself. Using, using, using words like um, <coughs> integrity. They said they give persons with integrity. And right now, one of the men that they give, who is landlord, cannot pay the rent. The court ordered him to pay. He hasn't paid. He has outstanding taxes. He hasn't been paid. And they talk about the granting license to persons with integrity. Well, let, let's let's look at this one. I am I am my mother, the executive of my mother's will. She has shares in New Guyana Company Limited that has not held an annual general meeting for over twenty years. Over 20 years, and they it were probably branded. owes the revenue of this country what you will millions say, of money. What they will say, Chris, is you're dishonoring your mother <laughs> by, not, by saying that. Uh, but the, 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 the issue, you're right. The issue here is how could you talk about integrity and um, transparency and, and keeping a promise and what have you, when in fact you have given your own uh, group, your party, uh, uh, five frequencies across uh, the country nationally. And that's the point I, I think people uh, need to understand. You've given Robert Passard and his wife, who celebrated 15 years of marriage, um, five frequencies. Probably they were thinking about Robert celebrating 15, so they took the three and multiplied by five and come up with the 15. So, and you say you don't know mathematics? At the end of the day, Bobby Ramroop, who I have nothing against, as I said, is Lyme McCall and Farrell are good. They end up, they end up um, being in a better position than everybody else. But let's take the New Guyana Company for a second. And I'm glad you raised it from that point of view. The New Guyana Company also sits on a piece of land, right? In industrial site, well, it used to. And they haven't held an annual general meeting, as you said, for a long time sits on a piece of land in, in, in industrial estate. The road that led to that industrial estate was the only road at the time, Hunter Street coming through by Russell Street there in Old Boys Town. Where did the PPP choose to put their estate, their, um, uh, what you call it, piece of land? Right at the, for, the, the first lot in that industrial estate, and you would remember, think Glenn too young, you would remember <laughs> Thank that you. that industrial estate was... Um, Cane Fields. Yeah, it was Cane Fields, and it was Dr. Jagan in the 1960s who brought that first industrial estate into place. And who took the first piece? Dr. Jagan and his party took the first piece on the right-hand side because you didn't have... Um, that pu the public road was way to the other end so you couldn't access the estate other than through all boys yeah, town that's correct. so when you look at it the history of this party is we first everybody second. else take second place which tells you that the thinking has been we will take control we are we are the cost we are not the custodians we are the owners take the pleasance story i hear dr um uh, luncheon dr so roger speak. forbes luncheon uh, um you don't like people i'm not the person forbes. against whom you have anything any i don't have anything against uh, you know you saying, like to say that yes so yes roger 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 was a good lad at one time but uh, and a good surgeon but he, he then surgeon. he sa then says he says he doesn't practice anymore he then said that 
the they, they will not allow the e-governance project to be hijacked by the people of Pleasance. No, something wrong with Rogers thinking he's lost it. I don't know if it's the F in his name. He's lost it. He now says we are not going to have this uh, e-governance project hijacked by the people of Pleasance when they tore and hijacked the Pleasance people uh, playground. Something is wrong with our society when let we me, think that. Let me, you want to come let in. me just let me just make make a bigger comment. Something we're missing here is the the way in which Jack they issued this license. You know, it 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 surrounded with secrecy. When he left office, all we were told, the nation was told, is that license were granted. Really, license were granted. The media tried and tried and tried and tried to find out who were granted these license. It was it was asking that question was like like uh, it was like a state secret. We didn't know, like you rightly said in the opening um, statement, it took 15 months for this nation to know who was granted. It just go to show how wicked these, the, the, these people are. They kept it a secret until we only know when, when um, Kathy Hughes asked a question in Parliament. And Chris, what we're missing here is that Sam Hines, our PM, was it was and not even clear and truthful to this nation until now all he handed was a piece of paper with 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 with, with information of i consider half truths maybe that's all he had no it maybe is half truth to what extent was it half truths when you say when you say deputy ps lochan omkar lochan is a contact person when you say siraj contact person for the new Guyana Limited five channels. You're not telling, you, you've not been telling us the, the, the truth. It's like issuing a license to Glenn Lal and says, you know what, the contact person is Enrico Wolford. What you do, you're misleading people. And that's what, 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 they, what, what, what they have been doing. In fact, in fact, Glenn, again, is, is going up the right road here. Because the Prime Minister <laughs> was asked by Kathy, and um, he's also a good person. Oh, the Kathy's a wonderful. No, the Prime Minister. No, no, no I talk about Kathy. Kathy's a wonderful person, an old friend from back in the sixties. Uh, the Prime Minister. Kathy I from don't, back in the sixties. Yes, she was born back then. Uh, Kathy um, asked the question, and there's some of the questions, nearly all the questions Kathy raised, I had raised in the public um, domain, in, in the public domain, in the press prior to that. Huh? And, I, and I said in one of, one of the letters that if the, if the NFMU, if the administration will not answer me, then they will be, I will ask an elected representative to ask the questions. Good thing Kathy picked up the questions and asked them in parliament. But if you recall, Sheila Holder, God rest the dead, had asked nearly the same questions back then when I networks was a hidden thing. And the Prime Minister went around the issue, danced. Now, getting back to Glenn, Glenn points out that the Prime Minister did not give the whole truth because he says on page two of the document regarding the principles of the companies, these, he is answering an, a, 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 a fellow MP, you know, a colleague. Yeah. Regarding the principles of the companies that have been granted permission to broadcast, the deeds registry would have the most accurate information. Come on, Mr. Prime Minister. All you have to do is pick up the phone and say, I am the Prime Minister of Guyana. Could the deeds registry research and say who are the principles? Because I have to That's answer his job, is it? in Parliament. Huh? That's his job, isn't it? I think that is what he's getting paid for. But it's not an insult. It's not seriously an insult. It is but we sit insult. down and we accept it. Yes, the nation We live in BG. We just take in wherever we could get. I thought in BG people used to protest more. No, that is the problem. In I BG? Think, I think what? No, no, no. Here, no. This BG. This, uh, the, oh, this, this one. Uh, this Barat Guyana. Oh, Barat Guyana. This one here. In this, in this circumstance, what has happened? is that it's either people are tired or people are so preoccupied with paying their mortgage, ensuring their car payments are done, uh, fetching water um, to the second floor of their building because most, most times they don't get it on the forest. They get it on the forest, but they got to carry it upstairs. 
and making sure that they don't have blackout and taking the things out of the fridge. People are so preoccupied with other things that it is sometimes difficult for them to realize, as Glenn is saying, the severity of what this thing is. The Prime Minister has the nerve to say to a fellow MP, you go and check the deeds registry. I, uh, you ask the question, you go and check the deeds registry. What, what Chris, 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 one second, one second. Sure. I, have a, I have a question, not only for you and Enrico, but I have a question for this, this, this nation. How do you convince a nation? What do you tell the people of this country when you can issue five radio channels to Guyana Times, when you can issue five to the Mirror newspaper, and you cannot, you did not, you disregard and you disrespect Kaicho News, the leading newspaper in this country, and Starbuck News. How do you convince a nation that you 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 have done you have done the, the right thing for a nation? I, How do you convince a nation? What do you tell the people of this country when you when you have when you have disrespect and disregard Channel Two, Channel Six, Channel Seven, Channel Nine, Channel Thirteen? Chris, what is happening in this country? And guess what? This nation sit down and sit as if. Business is as usual. Let me, well, let me throw this question. Um, I'm glad you asked me. Now I'm going to pass it to Enrico. You mentioned this contract, social contract, mm -hmm. etc. Shouldn't the PNC, PNCR, whose leader, whose late leader, entered into that compact with President Jagdeo, have been taking a much stronger position on this matter? to protect an agreement made by its leader? Well, I can't answer for the PNC, but I no, would I'm say asking this. No, I'm asking you think it should. What I, well, I would say this, that the PNC, like the AFC, like any other political party, must become engaged. Even if they didn't engage themselves then, they ought to engage themselves no, now. No, my in question the process. is, given, given that the, the PNC, our leader, had made that agreement. Of course the PNC ought to ought to have uh, taken a, a, a stronger role in it. And the PNC did, you know, the PNC, from the reading that I, that I, um, I have done on this matter, the PNC always reminded the, um, the People's Progressive Party civic government of its commitment to, to the this broadcasting This is post the, the, the revelation of this information. I'm talking post the revelation of this information. Post the revelation of this information, yes, they, 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 they should become more involved. Um, and to my mind, to my mind, Chris, it does not matter in terms of the opposition parties who takes lead on what. What is important is what Glenn is saying. The people of the country must realize that they, or they are affected, they ought to be engaged, and power belongs to the people. Sovereignty belongs to the people. Is the government in a hijacking anything? Right? Is the people thing? Chris, you're not like Enrico. Like Enrico, I would not want to comment what the PNC or what AFC should say or do. I initiated a protest. I have never thought or think in my wildest dream that I would have initiated a protest in this country. Stand up, fight for something that I strongly believe in. And I have, I have initiated a protest that lasted two days. And I don't intend to stop whether I have the support of the PNC, the Avenue. The, the AFC or whoever. You had support of the AFC. I, I, I think I saw... Whether I, have, whether I have the opposition or not, Chris, I will not stop. I will not stop until this injustice is leveled off, until we get a level playing field, until, until all is being treated equal. Chris, it's frightening to just think that our children will wake up one morning and hear on all the, the channels as he or she turns the, the knob on the radio to hear, um, oh, you know what, President Ramutar is the greatest president this nation has ever seen or would ever seen, not knowing that he may not even be a good restaurant manager. What I'm, why, why I use that, that term is, to, is to, to, to let you know how serious it is that there is no other independent views to counteract him being the greatest leader or the greatest manager. 
on and it's frightening and, and chris just just a slight correction you were saying in terms of the protests i remember seeing what's the, what's the guy's name um harman wow, yeah. joe harman and, and 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 persons from the pnc and, the and, and, AFC, and yeah. AFC yeah they were there they were there desmond there. trotman and those guys i think they came out but the issue is not is not the political leaders as i said the issue is the people and and and, and again glenn is is going down the right track the people must understand that one day they could wake up and think that we're living in a country run by kim jong-il or whatever correct. your name is perfect the, the, the simple point i i think um, people don't underestimate the intelligence or the spine of Guyanese. They, from time to time, have responded magnificently to calls for a particular situation. So let's not give up hope. Let's just take an outbreak and have a, a drink of water. Okay. Welcome back to Plain Talk as we discuss the allocation of radio frequencies with by former President Bar Jagdio. We have on as our guests this evening Mr. Glenn Lal and Mr. Enrico Pulford. This point we keep making about Jagdio did this, Jagdio did this. Look, Jagdio is now a private citizen. He cannot be re-elected re president. Why do we think Bar Jagdio would have done what he did? in the dying days, in the twilight hours of his presidency. Chris, I know that he has been sitting in that chair as president, comes with a lot of power. He needed, when he's stepping out of that office, to hold or to sit in a chair that has some sort of power. Sit having been there for such a long time he must have learned that the press is a very powerful tool yeah, so but he's he ventured by he ventured he ventured into, into 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 newspaper into tv radio i want to add a little piece i want to tell you 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 have said earlier about the cable license not important Chris, cable license is more important than radio license. No, I, I think you misunderstood it. I was, I was asking about okay, a different question. Okay, mm. okay, okay. And do you really believe that Vishuk and Brian Young are the owners of those two cable licenses? No, my friend. No, my friend. They are just the front of this, of this business. But surely that stretches it. Don't you think those businessmen would, would, would have an interest in all of this? Of course they, they have shares in it. They have shares in it. But who in the right sense would give a, a business of that magnitude into the hands of these little guys? Brian Young, <laughs> it's nobody to talk about. Brian Young run, no, I don't think any business he run, he run successful. Everything run now. These guys are just the front. Do you subscribe to that? Uh, that, that, that is um, Glenn's view, and Glenn is entitled to his view as to who is really in control of what. No, my view. But a view must be reasonable. And, no, no, no. Uh, and, and no he's entitled to his view. Yes. But what I don't want us to have, what I don't want to happen here is what happens in this country. We divide the country into those for and those against. Um, we divide the country into those who are Barrett uh, thing and those who are bitter old men, you know, so it becomes bitter Guyana. Um, now the problem here is, and the, the, the point he's making about cable is, is, is a valid point, in that in the future, w at the 2.5 gigahertz band, it is going to be important to Guyana because when you do like the optimum triple play, bear with me for a second, you will then have telephone. No, but because it, it internet, moves away from my question. My question was. No, no, internet but my question and, was. Um, 
uh, and uh, radio. Yeah, no, no. Uh, the significance is uh, that's uh, we accept that. But the question is, why would we think Barjali, who cannot be president anymore, he's a private citizen? Why do we think he did this? Well, Barry Jandio was also um, a, a major functionary in, and still is, a, a functionary in the People's Progressive Party. And I'm saying to you, the People's Progressive Party obviously operates on a position where you look back at the industrial site and all the other decisions that they've made in the past. They take what is in it for them first. They, like the people on an aircraft, when an aircraft is supposed to go down, they put on their own mask first before they attend to those in their care. <laughs> right? So even if they lose, they win because they will still survive. So the position is, they're, they're, they're smart political animals, you know, don't take this jeopardy. What the, their position is that, look, if we can control the electromagnetic spectrum, even if we, they, they lost the, the, the majority, they won the plurality. Even if we lose the plurality, we still win because, as Glenn is saying, we still have control no, over Glenn the media. No, Glenn is saying this is Jack Dio. You're saying it's PPP. I am saying it is the People's Progressive Party, of which uh, President Jack Dio is still a functionary. I do not want to get into whether I like Jack Dio or I don't like Jack Dio, or whether no, Jack Dio Jack, is, is a... Hold on. And because I know, I know, I also know the media, and I can see tomorrow's headline saying Glenn castigates Jack Dio because he's bitter, and um, Chris Ram is a bitter old man, and he doesn't like Jack Dio. So I stand, I stand in, in, in the middle ground. Whether I like Jack Dio or I don't like Jack Dio does not matter. What is action? His action is what I'm concerned with. His action to give his sister-in-law, sister. -in -law, sister my sister in law sister, Robert Prasad, wife, Kamini. Sister, Ruth Balget from the Bronx. Is Ruth Balget, I think oh, she but is. Surely, surely she is a director of, of this company. But, Hannah, where does the broadcasting authority come into all of this? <laughs> we have, now that we have legislation, uh, how did we get here? And, and how can we get ourselves out of it? If it's so bad, the broadcast authority needs to stamp its authority, needs to say, look, we cannot accept that those frequencies that were given by the president were given in a fair and transparent manner and does not satisfy and, 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 and the way they were given does not satisfy the criteria that were set up by the very president himself because no there, there is no way on the on this oath that he did that action with without fear or fear of affection or ill will he clearly did it with affection and he, for some and ill will for others even Vikin Ali and Hugh Chumley I think I know Hugh Chumley made an application oh man Hugh Chumley been in broadcasting since I was a little boy and I'm 55 and you jumpy dead and gone and ain't get nothing. Vicinson Ali also been in the broadcasting and he ain't get nothing. People who have been around as as Glenn is saying, Starbrook News, Kaicho News, Starbrook has been there since the eighties, eh? You too. Uh, the, 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 the early nineties. Ain't get nothing. Sharma, who has been around, ain't get nothing. And all of them are seen... Sabbath News didn't get either. No, and all of them are seen as independent voices. If not, in some cases, they're, they're referred to as opposition voices by some. No, when, when the public... You're saying the public is, 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 is very smart, and I agree with you. When the public realizes, wait a minute, we will be in a position of Kim Jong, whatever it is, his mm. name is, um, mm -hmm. right? And we're going to be waking up and hearing Ramatars, the best thing next to sliced bread and so on. <laughs> and um, and the, 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 but once they don't touch their latch, may I, all right. Um, the, they're going to, the, the people are going to realize, wait a minute, this country has been hijacked by the government. Not that the government... Um, so so you, say, you see a political dimension. You appear... Um, that 
you see an ethnic dimension to all of this. Is it the same? Well, well, it is both. It is both. But I want to add a little piece on what Enrico was saying just now. <laughs> Enrico, Enrico talked about the, the, the granting and who wasn't, who wasn't um, granted. Uh, the the issue the issue and what what takes me apart rips me apart is when they did not respond to us by saying hey you wasn't who, granted who is this they the broadcasting well, authority the broadcasting or the the previous um, that was that was that, that that would have been committee the Jagdeo administration man let's deal with the Jagdeo administration he he did not they did not even send a letter saying you were refused but but now we are being told that if you're so interested you must reapply having spent so much time and energy and money to prepare an application back then in the, in the days did those people who were given was was there apart from the decision by jack Mew, was there something wrong with the process was there something they did that enable them to get the licenses that you didn't do you and know, so prevented you from getting it. You know, Chris, what you guys are not doing, you're interviewing the people who didn't get. We should interview the people who got. People like Rudy Grant, people like Hits and Jams, people like uh, Maxwell Tom, Alfred Alfonso, and even Bobby Ramrope, and ask them to go on record and to say to the National Assembly, when they applied, how they were asked to apply, how they knew um, that they applications were, were pending, how they knew that, um, that um, they had gotten license and so on, when they fill up these forms and so on. Remember I raised this issue with China TV mm -hmm. and everybody said, oh, blah, 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 blah. The China Gail TV said you, was, Gail said that was a racist thing as well. The, the, no, no, no. Gail talking about the, the, the Mario. Mario the, um, yeah, this, oh, yeah. country, this country is uh, so... Pivots around race but, but, that it is. But, but Enrico, it is I am glad you raised that point because too many people. Look, I've I've invited so many people on this program. They are people are afraid. People people are, are cowardly. They've got all kinds of skeletons in the cupboard, and they don't want to come. They don't want to talk. You know, we don't like to go back sometimes, but uh, um, and I believe if you if you continue to go forward while you're looking back, you're gonna bump into something. But do you recall? Uh, and I was I was out studying in England and the United States. Uh, do you recall that Walter Rodney said that we are going to be numbed? Yes, that was the word. Have you reached? Out? Have we reached? Out? And I have think. We, have we reached, out, Glenn? I think we are numbed. Are people, like, I don't you know, are people you know. like you and Sharma wasting time with all of this work? I wouldn't doing? want to say that the people are numb. I think it's more of survival. I think it's more of making a living. And why I'm saying this, it is because of my experience. You know, Chris, you'd find an, uh, a senior official. When they're in office, you never hear anything wrong with their ministry or with their administration. If something goes wrong with them and they have to demit office, then you hear. Or those who follow with the party. Right. Then you hear, then you hear they, they want to meet you secretly to tell you all kinds of things that has been going on, that is going on. But how long they're sitting there, if they're not, like you said, coward, numb, I don't think so. I think that just everybody just waiting to get into that chair to see what they can grab. And take hold of. So you've you've said you all have said that the broadcasting authority, which is headed by another PPP um, person, is it? Yes, and I, and I and I and I very early on criticized the composition because again, uh, the, the the whole act, the, the 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 law itself, created such a such a, a conundrum. I mean, how could you do that? I mean, but we, as I said, we, we, we sit down um, and we listen to Roger Forbes' luncheon, and Roger we get up, luncheon, and we, get up. and we want to know what is the F for. <laughs> careful, careful. That's all I'm going to ask. for Forbes. No. <laughs> now, if the Broadcasting Authority is not doing anything about it, can Ramatar do something about it? Can President Ramatar do something about it? I honestly, and should he? Should he? Of course, I honestly believe that he will do something about it. And he's think, defended, he's defended think, it, then? I think, 
I think he has a good heart, and I, I, I honestly believe that he will. He will. He will he, wake up one morning and say, it, Jagdeo did an injustice not only to, to us as independent uh, voices, but to the nation. So, surely he can't, he can't say that in the next five years if, if what he has said is on record. This, like I said, the same way, the same way Jagdeo woke up and decided that I'm going to grant these licenses to my friends and family. Man, are you being realistic in, in thinking that President Ramatha we, could, could well, reverse I, his position? I think, I, I, I honestly yeah, feel so. You, no, the, the question is, does he have the power? Of course he has the power. Of course he's and, president. And, and if so, is he likely to do that? Glenn is optimistic, uh, optimistic that he's likely to do it. And yeah. I, am, I could be optimistic because I, I, I remember Desmondoid, uh, talking about the counting of, 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 of ballots at the place of poll as being a logistical nightmare, mm -hmm. and then reverse this position. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can be a statesman. You can come out there and, uh, and be uh, magnanimous in your, in, 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 in your position. So let us have some hope, hope. In, in this society. But don't are you all give being unrealistic up. there? Don't, don't give up yet on, 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 on the society. What, 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 what I would like to see is that the courts understand the issue and rule. Well, I was coming there in, because I wanted in, to do it by phases. In, um, in, in the position, the president understands the issue and makes a, a declaration, right? And the people understand the well, issue. Well, listen, you know something? Let me tell you this. Then I believe you're being naive, not just unrealistic, in thinking that President Ramadar is going to reverse it. We wouldn't have to wait long if someone takes this matter to court. We have said the Broadcasting Authority can do something. That they haven't done anything, and they're not likely to do anything. They said, you people bring in your application. We might think about it. The president said, look, Jagdeo has been keeping a promise. Um, so probably the next stage and the only other stage, and I'm taking the, the legal route, um, and the, the protest is not a, a, an illegal route, um, the next stage is to take this matter to court. Why is this not happening? Well, court action is in the process. The Media Proprietors Association, which included myself, we are at that stage now where I think in a few days' time we'll be filing um, court papers. We, we, we intend to use every channel possible to fix this injustice, to get it straightened this injustice. Which could be fixed at the stroke by President Ramadar. It will, Ramadar, it will, it will which, be fixed. Which can be fixed at the stroke. And, and it needs to be fixed. And, uh, and, and getting back to the question of, um, of the information that is out there, uh, the Prime Minister said that the records of when, what frequency was actually assigned in the period 1992 to 2001, just prior to when television, the television broadcast sector was regularized, may not have been properly maintained. This is a prime minister admitting to the National Assembly that, look, we are running this administration and we are losing records. And you he's, know? Been, he's been prime minister throw that thing. And he period. has been prime minister throw that thing. And we said, oh, we take it. I mean, yet, Bibi Shadik tells us we must reapply, which presupposes you had applied in the first place. They very well know who applied and who didn't apply. Don't tell me I have a letter here from 1994 that was written to the GTNT um, general manager from the National Frequency Management Unit. Even if you are claiming that you can't find your record. Come, come on, call GTNT, call um, Kaicho News, call C CN Sharma, call Enrico Wolford, and get their record and say, well, a rec that if I'm answering you to an application in 1997, okay? It usually that's why you that's why you write that way in I, I wish to refer to your letter, letter dated the 9th of September so it means you must have a letter dated the 9th of September in your position to for, for you to go to the National Assembly and say records of what we have are not available and I tell you this it no, also no, happened conclude, conclude it, that, that statement you're about is, is, is you ridiculous to go. 
Is he is, lying? Is, is he lying? Ridiculous? Is he lying? I would not say that the Prime Minister is lying, but he is, uh, he is handling the truth not too nicely. For him to okay, to, to, about the same thing. To, to, to to say that um, he can't find the records. But I'll tell you this. The same thing happened when they moved the board certificate office from one place to another. They said they can't find board certificate. I remember they said they couldn't find Gordon Mosley board certificate at one point. They, and here it is. When they moved the GRA from Lemaha Street to Camp Street, they lost records, including a letter I sent to them. You, you see something wrong with this society? Now, the point I'm... So the, the question I, I put to Glenn, why legal action is not being... Legal action will be taken, and legal action will be taken both at, at the association level and at the individual level, where individuals will say, look, we have been discriminated against. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the Ghana Media Proprietors Association will say, as a body, we have also been treated unfairly. It is not good for commerce. It is not good um, uh, for the country for people to be left out of the society. And you know, Chris, we are talking about the airwaves. Have we ever considered if a road is going to be built from here to Brazil, whether the Guyana government in like manner may have given sides of the proposed road that they know they are going to build, to their various uh, friends, um, family, and colleagues to benefit later down, as we like to would say, you in this country. Would you rule that out? No, I would not. I would not. And I would not rule out a license for aircraft, and I would not rule out waterfront a license and so on. One day you might be fishing in the, in, 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 in the Deborah <laughs> River and discover the way you bring up the fish. Bobby Ramroops, I got a license uh, for that fish. <laughs> Lime McCall is a date. Lime McCall, Lime McCall, and, and, and Farrell. He's a good boy. <laughs> now, Glenn, I want to take you a bit. You say you have confidence or optimism that President Ramadan is going to reverse the position. When an action is brought against a public authority, if there is going to be a defense, or in any case, the public authority, the, uh, the government, will use the Attorney General. Would you like to take a bet that the Attorney General will defend any action you or anyone else seek to bring in order to get um, a remedy on this issue of the radio licenses? Well, of course, Chris. Uh, um, a defense... Uh, so you can concede? Yes, but... Um, if you think the president is going to change... You still have mind. to defend, but I am, I am optimistic about, about this whole issue. And I, I, I honestly believe in my heart that Donald will wake up and says, hey, let's straighten this issue. I believe that. I honestly believe that. Why hasn't he done it so far? I don't know. There are so many things he hasn't been doing, not only this. And I, I think he needed a, I think he need a wake-up call. I need, I need, he needs he need some pushing. I think he needs some pushing. I honestly believe that. What do you think? Will be the position. Of, I, 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 I offered a bet to you that you didn't take me up. It's all right. You see the government um, fighting the action brought? I, I think the government just likes a fight. It likes to pick a fight. It goes from, uh, as I, I said, from one struggle to another. It's a struggling working class government. It, you know, it likes to make sure that you always have a working class, keep some people poor, and so on, and some people wealthy, and then we always have a fight. And when we pick a fight, Right? Here is the problem. As Glenn said earlier, them black people over there, mm -hmm. disgusting. And Wolford and Hughes and all of them black, other so called black middle well, class they got people. Some, they got some black people and got so called yes. black people. Yes, them, them, them middle class black people are racist. And they don't like a Freddy joining in them and so on. And Glenn Lal assisting that to happen. So let us galvanize, mobilize, and energize our base, which is largely Indian. Look at the sugar workers thing, you know. Um, big story over uh, Greenwich saying that, is, that the sugar workers are your problem. You know, yet they said the sugar workers all belong to different ethnic groups. Why get so upset? Why pull, why pull you know, things out of your hair? 
if you do not see the prism of race in this whole thing it as gail said about the chinese you know what is the issue when i raised the thing about cctv i did not raise content i raised exactly what happened here what frequency how they got the frequency and i say as rudy grant as the black people who got frequencies and as for alfonso the non you know the indian who got frequencies how they got it jave their jag you pick the pick up the phone and call them and say look apply for a frequency all right um diana is famous and probably this program reflects that an issue arises whether it's people's parliament whether it's the calypso banning etc it's a one-day wonder, not even a seven-day wonder. What makes us believe that this, um, the, the matter up in Sparanam, are not just one-day wonders, is going to disappear within a week or two? Because of the fights, as you say, Roger F. Luncheon likes to pick. Chris, this is one. I don't think, if it's not straightened, will go away. You have affected media houses, the main media houses of this country. You have affected the Starbuck News, the Kaicho News, Channel 2, Channel 6, Channel 7, Channel 9, and Channel 13. How can this rest Glenn, with a nation? I'm making, the point I'm making, you've affected people mm -hmm. with VAT. You've affected people with no local government elections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. I'm, on, I'm talking about this one-day wonder. This oh, what problem. makes you think this one is going to be so different? Is it because media, me, the media are involved? Of course the media. Because of the media, the media will not sit back. I would not sit back. I'll fight this, I'll fight this to, to, to the end. And Chris, do not say that nothing really happened. Because not, n not since yeah. 1961 or 64, did the PPP realize that they could lose the majority? And it happened in 2011 mm -hmm. when the people said, wait a minute, this is a set of Roger F. Luncheon going on here. This is a case where we are listening to people who are talking to themselves, believing themselves, acting of on themselves and giving to themselves the people the people have realized that that's why you have a majority in the national assembly I, I'm among glad, other things i'm glad your faith in the people <laughs> has somewhat been restored how do you see this playing out over the next two weeks we got one and a half minutes i believe yes 60 seconds how do you see this playing out straight heading for the court it will head to the court and i think it will be resolved. I believe that. Oh, by the court? By the court and by the administration. I'm hoping it will be resolved by both, and I'm hoping that the plurality will begin to understand that they have a stake in this matter too. Well, on that note of, of optimism, that the question of broadcast um, allocation of frequencies will be resolved, um, resolved amicably, and resolved quickly. Um, my, my name is Christopher Ram. Our guests were Mr. Glenn Lal and Mr. Enrico Wolford. We'll see you next week. Have a great week. <laughs>